Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's at Library Adventures Live. My name is Dinah, and I'm one of the librarians here in Kirklees. Today, we are going to be meeting the fantastic Alexander Cage, who's going to be introducing her wonderful book, Wish You Was, The Tiny Guardians of Lost Angels. You are in for such a treat as Alex will be talking about her life as an author and reading from her book. And we have a fantastic craft activity for you to do. But before we meet Alex, I want to ask you, did you see last week's Library Adventures Live with the author Connie Hook? Connie is a presenter and author who used to present Blue Peter. She's the longest presenter of Blue Peter from 1997 to 2008. And I used to love Blue Peter as a child, which is a very long time ago. I used to get busy making all the crafts. Connie shared her latest book, Cookie, and the most mysterious mystery in the world. Cookie loves science, and we learned some exciting science experiments. But don't worry, if you miss the show, you can watch it live, or you can watch it back, sorry, on kirkleyslibraries.co.uk forward slash lal. So you can watch it back and see all the fantastic experiments that Connie shows us. Okay. So, what I want to do now, without further ado, is meet Alex, because I'm really, really looking forward to this. Wish You Was has been my book that I've been reading the last couple of weeks, and I've super, super enjoyed reading all about the underground world of the Royal Mail Service, and Alex is going to introduce you to it. So, without further ado, let's bring Alex onto the show. Hi, Alex. Hello, hi, and good morning and to everyone watching. Hi. <laughs> it's lovely to have you on the show. It's lovely to be here. And I can see a Christmas tree in the background. You're getting all Christmassy. Other way. <laughs> yeah, Christmas tree that way, yeah. So we're all festive in our house already. So, Alex, we're really excited to hear about your, is it your first book? It is, yeah. So Wish You Was is my first book um, ever published. So, um, yeah, it's been a very, very exciting year for me. Brilliant. And when did the book come out, Alex? Was it in September? It did, yeah. End of September it came out wow. um, in the shops. So. And, and Wish You Was, it, it's a little bit Christmassy, set in December, is that right? That's right, yeah. So um, it's set in December 1952. Um, and it, the reason I set it then is because it was the year that the Great Smog came to London so um, in the past London was a very smoggy <clears throat> polluted place but that year there was a really terrible smog known in history as the Great Smog and um, it was also quite a, a, a miserable year for everybody the king had just died um, and rationing of chocolate and sweets um, and oh lovely gosh. things like that was still in place <laughs> and um, it was only a few years after the Second World War had finished so um, everyone really needed Christmas that year and all of the special deliveries that it brings more than more than ever, um, which felt uh, like a really special time for me to set this story. Fantastic. Well, shall I hand you over to all the people watching? Because you, yes, you've got a fantastic presentation. Yep. OK, so I will add your you two. Is that right? Uh, we need to just hop back to... Let me just take us everyone back to the first slide. You're getting a sneak peek of what's to come. So this is a little glimpse of Wish She Was, um, the main character from my book, Wish She Was, The Guardian of Lost Letters. So today, I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about me, um, a little bit more about the story. I'll read you a chapter from the book, and we'll also look at some postal fun facts. Then I'd love to share with you a little... Um, craft activity that you can do at home. Um, it's really super easy just to make a little post box Christmas tree decoration. And then we've got some questions. Um, and I hope people are, put me on the spot with some tricky ones. And then um, we'll just talk a little bit about Happy Post um, with Dinah and the wonderful Kirkley's Libraries. So a little bit about me. Um, this is me at the top of the page in the bright red top. I, thought, like, I do like bright red for some reason. Um, I uh, wish it was, as uh, Dinah's already said, is my first book. And um, it took quite a long time to write. It took me about 10 years and lots and lots of goes and tries um, to get the book and the story right. 
um, and it published uh, this year and that was just the most best feeling in the whole world ever and very luckily the lady the picture there in the in the black top she did all of the illustrations in the story and there's some absolutely beautiful illustrations which she's done um one for every chapter uh, and we had a an in-person book launch uh, at the postal museum which is in the same location as the story is set back in september and it, yeah it was a bit of a, a dream come true moment for both of us and i'm going to just show a little bit about where i come from so um, when I was younger, um, I lived in a bit of an odd situation. So half of my family lived in, in Zimbabwe, in Africa, and I lived in London with my dad and my stepmom. And every year I would board a plane on my own from the age of five until I was about 10 and fly to Zimbabwe on my own. So um, in a way, it was a bit like being airmailed every year, backwards and forwards to see my family. So that had um, definitely had an influence on the story. And Penny's mum is an airmail pilot. So that's a bit of a theme running through the story. Um, I currently live in London with my husband and my five-year-old daughter, Bella, uh, obviously with all the pigeons. Um, and when I was growing up, my favourite story of all was The Borrowers, which is by an author called Mary Norton. And it was actually published in 1952, funnily enough, the year when Wish Was was set. This is a little um, picture from one of the, the covers of the book. Um, and The Borrowers, in case you don't know the story, um, is the story about these tiny people who live in secret under our floorboards, in, particularly in old houses. And they live off um, things that they borrow from humans. So um, you probably see some tiny little pictures there. Um, they they make things out of matchsticks and, you know, clocks out of old watch dials and um, beds out of matchboxes, that kind of thing. And my biggest fear in the whole world ever is, is spiders. I'm absolutely petrified of spiders. I did once go to Edinburgh Zoo um, and hold a spider tarantula, just like this picture, to try and get over my phobia of spiders. Um, and it only made it 10 times worse. I'm afraid that didn't work. Um, I don't have any fear whatsoever of rats and mice, um, which uh, was, is lucky because rats do feature in this story. But uh, yeah, never found them a bit frightening. But if you if I see a spider, um, I you will see me running uh, very, very fast. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the story. And to kick us off, I thought we could look at a lovely trailer uh, that Bloomsbury, my publisher, put together to introduce the story to you all. I hope that's got everyone feeling a little bit cold and wintry. Um, so I'll just go back to my slides and tell you a little bit about the characters. So the main characters of the story are Penny Black. She's 10 years old and she's staying at her uncle's post office while her mum um, is stranded in France uh, delivering letters and can't fly back to London because of the smog. <clears throat> Penny is very lonely um, and writing letters that she can't send when one night in the post office, she hears a sound and discovers a tiny creature that she's never seen before trapped in a rat trap. Um, and at first she thinks it's a rat as well and is a little bit scared to go near it, but she has a closer look and to her surprise, discovers that it isn't quite a rat at all. In fact, it's a different sort of creature with very long legs and long fingers and huge moon-like eyes. And she helps this creature out of the rat trap. And then it speaks to her and introduces itself as Wish She Was. And this is Wish She Was just up there on the bottom left. And he is a gatherer second class, but Penny has no idea what that means. And his tail has been wounded in the rat trap and Penny uh, finds a red uh, two and a half penny stamp, which she curls around where she was his tail to stop the bleeding. And that little act of kindness is what sparks their friendship. And Wish She Was isn't that sure whether he can trust Penny at first and actually runs away from Penny, but she catches him again using a letter. And 
that letter causes Wishy Was to take Penny and Adventure down into the underground tunnels of the post office railway. And this is a map that Penny drew, Penny Neville Lee drew, of the post office underground railway. So that big squiggly line in the middle is the railway with all the little stations along it. And that railway is a real place. It's a real railway. Um, it was still running in 1952 and it goes all the way from Paddington to Whitechapel underneath London. Um, and the little ring there, you can see something, uh, the, some of the words have been had a ring put around them. That is Mount Pleasant, which is the real life post office headquarters in London. And that just, just a little uh, abandoned section of tunnel near to Mount Pleasant is where the sorters have their secret subterranean home which they call the Bureau. And Wishy Was leads Penny underground it, through a post box, uh, through a tunnel, uh, sorry, a pipe underneath a post box to the Bureau. And there's a little glimpse of the Bureau here. So the sorters live off abandoned furniture, objects and knickknacks, which the Royal Mail no longer wants or needs. They keep themselves completely hidden from humans. So even the Royal Mail don't know that they live there. And in this picture, you can see some of the things they use. So they use old filing cabinets and cupboards as office buildings, which they um, connect together with uh, old bits of, of parcel string and rope. They have a cardboard postal tube that runs along the ceiling, which is their form of pneumatic tube mail. It's a high speed way of getting letters from one end of their tunnel to the other. They use old wicker mail trolleys um, as sort of carts. And everything they use, eat, live on is in some way um, rescued and recycled from uh, the Royal Mail rubbish. The Bureau is guarded by twin guards, Handle with Care and Fragile, who you can see there. And they are, they're holding a fountain pen and a letter opener as miniature weapons to scare off any rats or possibly um, any humans like Penny who suddenly arrive at the Bureau gate. And the Bureau is uh, run and uh, ruled by uh, their highnesses, who are dear sir and dear madam, and they're there holding their uh, swan feather quills. And they are very stern and quite pompous. And uh, they are some of the first characters whom Penny um, is introduced to when she arrives at the Bureau. But the sorters are very unsure and very untrusting of humans and um, believe that all humans think they're rats and will certainly um, capture or hurt them if they're caught. And they have good reason to be fearful as well. And the reason they keep their lives so uh, hidden and secret from humans is there are characters like Stanley School, who is the Royal Mail rat catcher. And there he is um, arriving at the post office where Penny is living with his dog Ripper. And Stanley School has made it his personal mission to hunt down and capture the sorters and intends to uh, commit a terrible crime. A little bit about the story and um, what I'm going to do now is just read you a chapter it's chapter six called uh, the bureau this is when Penny first arrives at the sorter's home it's chapter seven hinges squealed and the front gate creaked open flooding the tunnel with warmth and light Penny stepped inside blinking in the sudden brightness wishy was leaped onto her shoulder follow us handle with care ordered while Fragile heaved on a rope to close the gate. We're reporting you to their highnesses. They rule the Bureau. I thought you called it the Burrow, Penny whispered to wish she was. He ruffled his fur. I was never saying it right. Penny smiled. It doesn't matter, she murmured, as the twin guards marched either side of them. Twinkling Christmas lights strung along the tunnel ceiling guided their path. Peeling posters with slogans like post early this Christmas, are you pulling your weight and pack your parcels carefully, papered the walls in bright colours. The air smelt like a library and she could hear a chattering noise growing louder. This is where we take the letters, dear Penny, wish you all squeaked as they rounded a bend and she felt him puff up with pride. Penny stared. A tangled web of rope zigzagged across the tunnel, forming bridges between ancient looking bookcases and shelving units, step ladders and dented filing cabinets, like phone wires between the buildings in London. Sorters scampered along the ropes in a busy hive of activity, while wicker baskets on wheels, large enough to hold a person, hurtled along the ground, veering from side to side as sorters hauled them along on ropes. Everywhere Penny looked, Sorters carried envelopes in their mouths, their round eyes fixed ahead of them. There are so many of you, she said. 
The nearest sorters snapped their heads round in her direction. They blundered into each other and envelopes fluttered to the ground. Shouts erupted from the sorters behind them. Move along there! Stop blocking the line! Rope hog! Then those sorters spotted her too, and the rope swayed as they crashed and lost balance, clinging upside down by their paws. It's a human! they squeaked. Penny felt a sharp point jab her shoe. Move! ordered Handel with care. She ducked under the ropes, treading slowly to avoid scaring the sorters too much. Even so, they leaped and scurried for cover as she passed them. Every piece of furniture bustled with activity, and the air rustled as envelopes were whisked from one pair of paws to another. Inside one cupboard, she saw sorters seesawing on an ink blotter, flattening a crumpled letter. They toppled backwards when they spotted Penny. Something rattled above her head, and she saw long cardboard postal tubes connected together with tape. The tubes snaked along the roof before dropping towards the ground, where sorters queued up, clutching letters. One at a time, they stood inside an opening above a whirring desk fan, which shot them upwards at terrific speed. Like a lift, Penny said. Pneumatic tube mail, actually, answered one of the sorters in the queue, before catching sight of Penny and falling over in a dead faint. Wish she was. What do you use the letters for? Penny asked. He opened his mouth to reply, but Fragile barked, No more questions! Sorters scurried everywhere Penny looked. Hundreds of round eyes met hers as she stumbled along. A side tunnel branched off the main one, but the guards marched her past too quickly to glimpse what was down there. Then they came to an area of the main tunnel with two long rows of rectangular letterboxes attached to wooden posts stuck in the ground. Some were red, some blue and some green. They faced each other like houses on stilts, each with its own number above the letter slot. Is this where you live? Penny whispered to wish she was. He nodded and shuffled closer to her ear. Mine is 102. The green letter boxes is for gatherers. Blue ones is for solvers. One day if I is upgraded to a deliverer, I get a red one. Ah, I see, Penny said. The red letter boxes were smart with royal mail stamped on them in gold, whereas the green letter boxes looked older and many were crooked. She spotted number 102, one of the shabbiest, perched like a lopsided parrot on its post. A taped on pencil stub replaced the number one. Round, whiskery faces peeped out of the letter slots, but vanished as soon as Penny smiled at them. At the end of the two rows, a tall red post box stood in the centre of the tunnel, like the one she'd climbed inside. A pocket watch dangled on a long chain from the letter slot, ticking quietly with the hands at quarter past two. On the floor beside the post box sat a set of rusted weighing scales. But instead of measurements, the dials showed the words standard, tracked, priority and urgent. Everything in the sorter's home had once been something broken or thrown away, Penny realised with a pang. Behind the post box, a curtain sewn together from frayed mail sacks covered the wall, with a magazine cutting of the Queen pinned to it. The guards halted, and Fragile yanked on the watch chain. Penny heard a faint ding-a-ling-a-ling from inside the post box, and felt wish she was his paw tighten around her plait. Narrow eyes above a pinched face appeared at the letter slot, level with Penny's nose. She was about to introduce herself, when the eyes slid to the ground and a voice demanded, what in parcel's name is the meaning of this interruption? Declare yourselves. Stamp duty. We found a human outside the front gate with wishy was, Handel with care answered, bowing low. We've come to report it to their highnesses. I see, stamp duty replied. The it you have come to report is, I assume, your failure to do your duty and guard the bureau. Fragile scar scrunched into a knot. He raised his letter opener at Penny, even though she cast a huge shadow over them. No stamp duty, the human, it brought a letter. And has it been taken to the solvers, as per Rule 18, Section 3, Clause 2B of the law, snapped stamp duty? Every item gathered must be inspected for authenticity and processed as quickly as possible. The guards blinked. Well, no, you see, enough. A yellow HB pencil emerged from the letter slot, grasped in a pale, skinny paw. The pencil wrapped against the front of the post box, where a right rectangle displayed post collection times. You are all aware of the strict timetable. The next audience with their highnesses is at four o'clock. I will not allow unscheduled deliveries to interrupt the normal operation of the bureau. Handle with care stuck up a paw. But it's not a delivery. It's a human. I can very well see that, said Stamp Duty. 
Nevertheless, it brought a letter, and as such shall be treated in accordance with our rules. The gatherer brought it, therefore the gatherer is responsible for it. Stamp Duty narrowed his eyes, at which she was. Take it and the letter away and bring both back here in time for the audience. Then he peered down at the guards. As for you two, I suggest you return at once to your posts in case any more deliveries arrive unannounced. After all, the cat is somewhat out of the bag now. The pencil whipped back inside the post box and stamp duty vanished. Fragile shot a startled look at his twin. Did he say cat? Oh, I think so, said Handel with care. He flung Penny's letter to the ground and the twin guards shouldered their spears and raced back to resume their posts. Wishy was, hopped onto the ground and picked up the letter. Now I can show you what we does with the letters, dear Penny, he said, his eyes gleaming. First, we have to go and find a solver. And that's chapter seven and the beginning of Penny and Wishy Was's adventure with the sorters. So I thought I would share with you some postal fun facts. I had to do lots and lots of research for Wishy Was. I had to research what things were like in 1952. And I also had to go and visit the Postal Museum and their wonderful archive in London. Um, and it's amazing. The po Royal Mail is one of the world's oldest organisations um, dating back to Henry VIII. And so they've got lots of fascinating stories. And I thought I'd share with you just a, a few of the funny um, stories and uh, little facts and tidbits that I picked up. So this um, uh, red stamp, it's a bit of a funny shape on the left there, is called the British Guyana 1C Magenta. And you might never have heard of it, but it is the world's rarest and most famous stamp of all. And it was actually discovered um, about 100 years ago or so uh, by a 12 year old boy called Louis Vernon, who found it on a letter of his uncle's um, in his uncle's apartment. And he sold it back then for six shillings, which was still quite a, a, a you know, a lot of money back then. But it recently sold at auction in America for 10 million US dollars. So it's a very, very lucky find indeed. And I believe there are only about three of these in the world. Um, and that's why it's so rare and so expensive. And in the middle there, you can probably see a picture of an old fashioned postman. Um, again, this is uh, from America. And um, for a few years in America, uh, and even in this country as well, in the UK, um, it was legal to send anything through the post as long as it was beneath a certain weight and as long as it had the correct postage and in America for a few years um, people found it was cheaper to post their children um, to see relatives uh, than it was to say take them on a the train themselves so luckily that practice was stamped out quite quickly um, all the children did arrive safely but uh, this is a picture of a little boy who is being uh, carried by the postman to see his grandparents um, a, a, a famous example from the United Kingdom was um, suffragettes. So um, suffragettes were, you've probably heard of them uh, or learned about them at school, um, but they uh, were a group of women who believed in um, uh, uh, equal rights uh, and votes for women. And they wanted to uh, get an audience with the prime minister, which was very, very difficult. So they came up with a clever uh, plan to post themselves to 10 Downing Street where the prime minister was. And, and it worked. They arrived at 10 Downing Street. Um, uh, the Royal Mail delivered them there because they'd paid the correct postage for themselves. Um, but unfortunately, the Prime Minister didn't see them that day. But luckily, as we know, um, they in the end succeeded. There have also been some bizarre methods attempted to deliver post. Um, this picture of a pigeon here is actually a, a, a carrier pigeon. And this is the little kind of um, bag and uh, little canister that carrier pigeons would wear when they would fly to deliver very important and often secret messages. They were used a lot during World War II and we owe uh, many of our um, you know uh, successes and things like that from the war uh, to these little creatures who delivered letters safely um, when people could not. Uh, in France during World War II uh, people were so desperate to send messages across the land that they actually tried using cats as uh, carrier, postal carrier cats, but unfortunately all the cats ran away. People have also tried using dogs, um, hot air balloons, rockets, and underwater capsules are just some of the funny ways that people have tried to get letters from one place to another. Not all of them have been very successful. 
And finally, um, the mail rail was abandoned for a long time. Um, so it stopped working um, uh, a few years ago uh, as th there was just not as much reason to use the underground postal railway anymore, sadly. So for a long while, uh, the tunnels lay forgotten and the trains inside them just lay there rusting. Um, but fortunately, um, in the last few years, the Postal Museum have um, built their museum and reinstated part of the railway line with trains that you can now ride inside. So if you ever do go to London, I would really recommend looking up the Postal Museum and maybe even going and visiting them and having a ride on one of these trains. And you can see inside the Postal Railway tunnels for yourself. They also online do a virtual ride. So if you can't get to London or if you would just like to have a look anyway, go onto their website and you'll find on there um, a virtual clip of uh, what it's like, what it feels like to ride through those tunnels on the train. So I thought um, it might be quite fun to make something posty related. So I'm just going to spend a few minutes uh, sharing with you a little craft activity, which is, oh, if I go in the right direction, this little uh, post box Christmas tree decoration, which I made for my Christmas tree. Um, it's very, very easy to make. All you need to make this, other than a little bit of glue, scissors and paint, is two toilet rolls and a uh, lid from a, a, a milk jug is the best thing to use or uh, a lid from a, a juice carton. Um, but that's all you really need. That's the, the, your basics. So I'll just talk you through the steps and I'll put these on my website as well afterwards in case you want to see them afterwards at any point. So again, what you need is um, two loo rolls, a milk jug lid, some paint, uh, a little bit of white paper, some glue and some scissors. And what you do, what you did start off with, is you take one of your toilet rolls and you just need to cut a line at the middle. So do ask grown-ups help for any of these steps. If you're a little bit unsure using scissors or ask their help to, to watch you do it. But you just cut one of your loo rolls up the middle like that. So it's open. And then you're going to curl it around itself until it fits inside your lid like that. And that's picture number one. So that's all you need to do. And then if you cut a little strip of white paper, you're going to glue it along the join here. And that's acting a bit like sellotape. But the reason you use paper, not sellotape, is that when you come to paint it, it's going to be much easier to paint over the paper than it would be paint over sellotape. So just glue it a strip of paper and that's to hold it together. So you end up with something like you have in, in um, picture number three. Then you need to make the little slot for the letters to go inside. So what you do is with your glued together roll, you're just going to pinch the toilet roll together, turn it sideways, and then draw a little rectangle just to guide your scissors, and then cut out, like in chapter four, uh, sorry, picture four, cut out a little slot. And then when you open it up again, you should have a little post slot there. <clears throat> the other thing you need to do, and this is where I would very much recommend asking a grown-up to help you um, so you don't hurt yourself, is just make a little hole in the lid of your um, milk jug lid to make a little hole there and that's just for your string or your ribbon or anything that you're going to use to dangle the, the Christmas decoration with to pass through that hole there so that's why you just need to make a hole and then once you've done that um, you need to paint your toilet roll red you might need to use two or three coats just to get it a really nice bright red color and you also need to cut out and paint um, two little rectangles one um, you can see them see them on the picture number 10 there and a tiny little square as well and just paint those red you're going to use those to make your collection times on your post box and then to make the base of your post box you don't have to make a base um, but I think it's quite a nice idea to have it closed so if you do choose to put anything inside your little post box you could put maybe a secret letter or you could even put some sweets or something like that and give it to someone as a Christmas present um, all you need to do is cut out a little um, a circle of white paper and that needs to be wider than the bottom of your post box and then cut little grooves along it all the way around so that when you put it on the bottom of your toilet roll you can fold those grooves over and stick them around like that like in in picture 12 and that makes the base and then paint that red as well or leave it white if you like you're not really going to see it and then the last step is you're just going to paint the inside of your post box black and that's just so that when you look inside the little letter slot um, you don't see the toilet roll and it just looks nice and dark and mysterious and then 
Last bits and bobs you're going to do is you're going to paint your lid of your post box red. Now, the best paint to use is acrylic paint, if you have any or if you have any at your school, um, because acrylic paint will paint onto plastic. But if you haven't got any acrylic paint, and I didn't at home when I made this, um, then easy trick is just to cover your lid in glue. Um, so use Pritt stick or, or PVA glue and then either cover it with tissue paper or I use toilet paper. So I've got a little square toilet paper and I just stuck it all over, let that dry. And then it was easy to paint the, the, um, the paper red that gave it a nice red colour there. And then you're going to take your piece of string. So you could use string or ribbon or a rubber band or any, really anything that you can use to, to hang your decoration with and pass that through the hole that you made earlier in your lid. Tie a knot so that it doesn't pull out. And then you're going to put all your bits together. So you're going to put your post box together with your lid, glue your lid on to keep it nice and secure. So just put some, some glue around the top of your post box and stick the lid on. And then you've got your base of your post box. The other thing you need to do is then make your collection times and your little square up here, which is the, the day of the next postal delivery. So you can choose any day you like, choose any times you like as well. Um, so you're going to use those little bits of cut out cardboard that you had earlier. And you're going to make some cut out uh, this, a rectangle and a little square in white paper, make them slightly smaller than the cardboard so that you've got a nice red border when you stick them on top of each other. And then you're just going to use a pen, I just used an ordinary black pen, to write some collection times on there and some and some bits and pieces. Look at an, uh, your nearest post box if you want some um, examples or some help on what to write. And then you're going to stick those onto your post box as well. So what you will end up with is something that looks like this with your lid and your collection times and your letter slot there. And then we're going to make the last step is to make the base of your post box. So taking your second toilet roll, you're going to measure about a third, measure it into thirds. Um, it doesn't matter if it's exactly a third, it can be a little bit less and just cut out your post box. So you've got two sections, two third sections. Make one a little bit thinner than the other. Paint those black. And then you're going to stick them together. And when you stick them together, make sure that your smaller section sticks over your bigger section. And that means you get that nice kind of ridge like you do on a real post box that you can see in, in picture nine there. And then all you're going to do is you're going to wrap that around your post box. So around the base of your post box, you might need to cut a little bit off just to make sure it fits nice and snugly and then just glue that on. And then you've got your post box. So you should end up with something a little bit like this picture on the left um, with your red post box. I chose to use a little bit of cotton wool and I just put a little bit there underneath the letter slot and I put some on the top um, just to make it like a snowy kind of post box. Um, but you could use glitter or you could just leave it as it is and just make it um, look like an ordinary post box. And as I said, you can put anything you like inside your post box. So you could make a tiny little letter to somebody or you could put sweets inside and then give it to them um, and they can burst open the bottom to get the sweets out anything you like really or you can just hang it on your tree that's how you make your post box so I'm gonna ask Dinah to uh, rejoin us and hopefully answer some interesting questions Hi, hi, oh Alex, that was brilliant, absolutely, it's like Blue Peter with Alex there, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be making my own post box later on, um, and it was really great how you showed us how to use things that, you know, that you got in your home, recycle um, the toilet roll and the milk bottle top, um, that was brilliant, and it makes a gorgeous Christmas tree decoration, thank you so much for sharing that. Well, I just learned so much. I love the amazing postal fun facts. I mean, imagine posting children. I can't believe it. I mean, if I said to my son, I'm going to post you to your grandma and granddad this Christmas. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> this is plenty and he's about six foot two. So. <laughs> but yeah, those are really, really fascinating. And um, I didn't realise that you could actually watch the virtual ride as well. So yeah, that's something I'm going to be um, having a look at afterwards. Um, fantastic, Alex. That was wonderful. Yeah, so we have got some questions. We had some emailed in. Um, so we'll go to the questions now. I'll bring them up on the screen. Um, first question is, as a child, did you dream about writing your own book? That's a really great question. 
Um, I I did. I think I wrote or had the idea for a first story when I was about 13. So I'd always loved reading and writing at school. It was my English was always my favourite subject, along with art, um, as you can probably guess. Um, but yeah, about 13, I had this idea for a story uh, or a series of stories about Magic Kitchen, which I never actually finished writing. But I remember running to um, my mum and saying, Mum, 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 I've had this amazing idea. Um, and she was very encouraging and said, yep, yeah, well, go and write it. It sounds very good. Um, you know, come back when you finished it. And I never did finish it, but I did start having lots of other ideas and um, started experimenting with different kinds of stories. Um, and uh, and that was kind of really, I just started to kind of grow a love of, of story writing. And I've always loved, loved children's books. In fact, most of the books I, I read are children's books as well. Um, and so, yeah, I, I did dream about it, but I think um dreaming about becoming an author probably mm. um came later because I didn't really know what that involved um mm. I mm. yeah my idea of what an author was um back then was someone who kind of hid away in a shed and and wrote stories and they magically became these books and there's a little bit more to it than that um uh but yes so um but it, it always was a dream of mine to kind of um write stories can I ask Alex how long did it take you to write where she was a long time. So I wrote the first version of the book quite quickly. Um, I was traveling in Indonesia, funnily enough, and um, I'd just seen a tarsia, which is the creature on which um, the sort is and where she was is based. They're very, very cute. They look a little bit like like this um, and they live in the trees and they jump enormous great distances and they're very, very hard to spot. But I was incredibly lucky to see one and I had already had a little bit of an idea about where she was and, and the um, penny post and things and written sort of start of the story but once I saw this task yeah I knew I had to finish it so I spent a few weeks writing it but um, to begin with uh, it needed lots of work it needed lots of changing and um, I got quite a lot of help from editors and my family who read it and said no this is this is good but you know we, we think it could be even better so it took me a long time to edit it um and then work with Bloomsbury my publisher to edit it to get it ready to be printed fantastic and yep here we have it on the shelves uh, we have them on the shelves at Huddersfield Library as well and all the oh, libraries fantastic. Lovely. <laughs> um so the next question Alex is do you like do you enjoy writing letters yourself I do. Yes, I've got a pen pal. Um, I'm a member of um, a society called the Handwritten Letter Appreciation Society, which is run by a lovely lady, also called Dinah, um, who uh, encourages us all to write more handwritten letters. And um, normally every weekend or so, I sit down with my five-year-old daughter, Bella, and we write a letter together. And it can be quite short, or it could just be a picture that we post. Um, but what we like to do is have as much fun as possible. So we decorate the envelopes. Um, we uh, try funny things with the address to trick the postman. I'm like writing the address upside down or um, <laughs> drawing a picture and then hiding the address inside the picture. So there's all kind of fun things you can do to um, test the Royal Mail. Um, and you can actually, you don't just have to write a letter on a piece of paper. Um, you can, probably shouldn't tell anyone this because it's a bit of a secret, but you can actually post anything as long as it's got, as long as it's not a human, because you're not allowed to do that anymore. But <laughs> not if you anymore. Want to write a letter on a flip flop or a leaf um, or even Gosh. a piece of toast, as some people have done, um, and put the correct postage on it, um, then it will be delivered by the Royal Mail. So, um, yeah, it's it's good fun to think of what other, what kind of Gosh. different things can you use to, um, to, to post a letter on wow that is that is really interesting i didn't realize that you could actually you know send a letter you know do a flip flop or... yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh dear that's great um so going back to your book um i'm really interested to know who is your favorite character in the book because we have some fantastic names i love the names that you've chosen for your characters um you. that you've that you've got um but who is your favorite character my well aside from wish you was who um popped into my head very at, at the beginning and he hasn't changed a bit and, and i do love wish you was um but my favorite character aside from him is probably this way up so this way up is an ancient biscuit obsessed 
solver and he is in charge of deciphering uh, lost letters to find out who they belong to um he's got quite a few secrets hidden up his fairy sleeves and he helps penny and wish you was through the story with a particular problem and you actually discover more about this way up's past um than the meets the eye at the beginning so he's um he's a, a lovely character um he's a little bit like um, my old my old granddad um and oh. he he was he was a lot of fun to write oh <laughs> Talking about biscuits, um, we do normally ask um, our presenters, it's been a running theme throughout Library Adventures Live, um, a question around biscuits. And so I'm going to throw this one at you, Alex, because I, I don't know if you're expecting this question, but here we go. <laughs> Let, let's try it. So the question is, if you were a biscuit, what biscuit would you be? Easy. Um, so the biscuit actually features in Wish You Was. It's a custard cream. Um, I, I love custard cream biscuits, uh, so does This Way Up, um, and uh, so a fact I only just recently learned about custard creams was, is that um, if you know what they look like, the little rectangular uh, kind of beige biscuits with a layer of cream in the middle, um, is that they got kind of this sort of um, pattern around around the words, uh, which are ferns. And I had no idea, and that's because at the time that custard creams were invented, people were really crazy about ferns. Mm. And that was a particularly nice thing for me to find out because, um, you know, jungle, you know, ferns, um, we often find them in kind of jungly places like where the sorters are from. So that was really nice to discover. Ah, oh, custard creams. Do you bite the top off first or do you- I do, I bite the top off, <laughs> eat the layer in the middle and then eat the bottom layer, yeah. <laughs> Oh, we have a famous biscuit factory in Kirklees. I don't know if you've, um, we're very near to us and we've got a library nearby called Fox's Biscuits. Should oh. I? <laughs> am I allowed to say that? I don't know if I'm. <laughs> Are you allowed to go inside? Um, I actually have been inside. Yeah, I did do some work inside. And um, when I was um, a health advisor, um, I, I did some work with the staff there and it smells so sweet. <laughs> so so sweet when you go in actually the floor feels really sticky because of all the sweetness but it's, oh, the smells are delicious yeah to visit a big biscuit factory is quite a treat <laughs> um but yeah i think i think i have to go for bourbon creams actually custard creams is my second but i have to go bourbon biscuits <laughs> they're also delicious <laughs> thank you for um, now <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely um so I'm just going to ask you about, um, are you writing another book? And if so, when we see, when will we see this on our shelves? Yes. Um, so I'm just finishing uh, the sequel uh, to Wish You Was, um, which doesn't have a title just yet. And uh, that's going to be published in the spring of 2023. Wow. And that's uh, set six months later in 1953 um, on the weekend of Queen Elizabeth's coronation and uh, the sorters call Queen Elizabeth the royal postmistress and she summons Wish She Was and Penny and gives them a top secret and very dangerous mission that they must complete before uh, the coronation happens and um, it's it's a lot of fun to write and particularly because up until now the sorters believe that they are the only sorters in the world um, but they've got quite a few surprises coming their way which I'm really looking forward to revealing. Cool I can't wait to see that book out Alex because I'm I'm I've actually I'm halfway through Wish You Was and I can't wait to find the ending what happens to wish you was and all the sorters and penny black so i'm proper excited to to finish this one and can't wait for your next one out thank um, you that, that yeah that's that's really exciting um i think that's all the questions that have come through um but i think you've got a challenge have you got a challenge for people watching we have so um on my uh, on my website uh, there are two templates which you can find. Uh, you can either find it under the school section um, at the bottom or you can find it under a section called Wish You Was Club. And there is this lovely colouring in sheet which Penny Neville Lee um, has drawn for us. And there's also um, on the right hand side, there's a, a letter template. So it's a very simple template um, if you uh, would like to write a letter. And we thought it would be a really lovely challenge for everyone to um, 
possibly use these templates or use one of your own or even use a flip flop. Um, but <laughs> to join in with um, Kirkley's Library's Happy Post uh, initiative. And I'll hand over back to you, Dinah, to tell everyone a little bit more about that. Yes, so um, everybody, we have we have our own letter writing project in Kirklees, um, which is called Happy Post. Um, we know um, there are a lot of people out there who would love to receive a letter um, that may have not got a letter um, for a long time, that may live alone, and they very they very rarely have any visitors. Um, so what we're asking um, the girls and boys out there and the adults um, is that if you could write a letter or draw a picture or even write a jo your favourite joke, and if you can send it to us, to Libraries Adventures at lblau at kirklees.gov.uk. And, and what we do is we send these letters out to people um, in their homes um, with a book. Um, so um, people can receive books at home and then when they get their book and um, they open the book and there's a lovely letter from yourselves or a picture um, or a, a joke um, or a quote, whatever you want to, to write or draw um, and it really makes someone's day. So we're asking everyone if you can send um, this to us at lal at kirklees.gov.uk and it would be lovely Alexandra if they can use your template and then we could share them with you and um, the letters that we receive um, and maybe you could tweet them so um, everybody can can see those letters because it is lovely to receive a letter um, I've got all my letters that my um, grandfather sent me and um, sadly he's no longer with me but um, I, I often get the letters out and read them and they're um, a lasting reminder of the of things that we shared with each other. Um, I was um, um, unfortunately in hospital once and I used to get the letters from my grandfather and it was just so lovely to get a letter. I think it's um, it's sad that letters aren't sent as much um, as they were. Um, postcards as well. Um, if you want to send a postcard, design your own postcard. Um, yeah, please, please send them to us and we can share them out um, to everybody that lives in Kirklees and make everybody's day. That yeah, would be lovely. I, I, agree. I, I am sure as well that anyone who receives a letter or a card will keep it forever. Um, I've kept every single handwritten letter or postcard I've ever received from anybody. I've got a big box of them up in my loft. Um, and it's lovely um, occasionally to just go through them and, and read what people are up to at the time. And often they really make me laugh. Um, and if you if you do write a letter and or if you colour in the picture um, and you're happy for me to share them, then I will happily tweet them. I'll also put them on my website in a little gallery as well. So um, do feel free to uh, to send them in, and if you let if you let Dinah know, um, then I'll I'll post them as well. That's wonderful. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much. Well, wish you was. <laughs> I wish you were here in Huddersfield with us because <laughs> it's been absolutely lovely meeting you. Um, and you know, finding out the adventures of the Sorters and wish you was and Penny Black. Um, I'm really, really excited to, to see your next book and I'm sure everybody else is um, that's watching today. So Alex, um, it's it's time to say goodbye. Um, I think we're um, nearly out of time. Um, that's soon bye, but thank you Dinah and Hannah and everyone at Kirkley's Libraries and everyone who's tuned in or is, good, is watching this later on. Um, thank you very much for listening and I hope it's been fun. And um, yeah, I also wish um that i could uh, i could be up there uh, with you in person um but maybe one day let's hope and i'll yes. come to the biscuit factory as well at the same time oh gosh yes that would be super <laughs> yeah absolutely and we'll we'll buy in lots of custard creams ready for when you arrive <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh well from everybody in kirkley's libraries and from myself and hannah we want to wish you all a very merry christmas um have you got a name for um is there a name? Has he got a name? <laughs> Not yet. No, that might no. need to be a little competition, a naming competition. No, he hasn't yeah. got a name yet. So, uh... <laughs> oh, well, we'll see you see you again soon, Alex. And we do hope that you will join us with your next book and come and visit oh, us in person. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye, okay. everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.
Okay, thank you everybody for joining us today. That was wonderful. Really, really lovely hearing all the, the facts about the postal service and making the postal box. I'm going to be off making my postal box um, as, as soon as possible. Um, I think I might do that this afternoon. Um, so don't, rem don't forget to send in your um, letters and share your pictures of the postal box um, to check with them the grown up first and you can send them to lal at kirklees.gov.uk um, and I hope that you will join us again for another Libraries Adventures Live I'm wishing you all a happy day um, take care everybody bye bye bye